Today's video sponsor is GVG Mall, where using my SKG discount code leads to a 25% off across several products, making a Windows 10 serial key only $16. After the payment, you'll receive the key in your account and all you need to do is to introduce it in your Windows settings and BAM! You have an activated system. Hello guys, I'm Shit Gameplays, I'm Fabio Pisco and today we have another video. So for today's video I actually bring you um, some rumors. I'm not, of, I, I'm not the guy that makes videos on rumors, but since these ones are actually pretty interesting, I will. Okay, and rumors today are about AMD releasing several types of new CPUs. One of them, for example, being the, the Ryzen 5 5500, then the Ryzen 5 5600, and the Ryzen 7 5700X, alongside with the new Ryzen 7 5800X 3D, which includes the new 3DB cache. And according to this, on video cards, uh, it says that they were actually, they will actually be released this month, later, later this month, and they will be once again the R5 5500 with six core six threads, then the R5 5600 non-X with six cores 12 threads but lower boost clocks as usual, the Ryzen 7 5700X eight core 16 threads once again as the same as the 5800X but with lower boost clocks, and then we have the Ryzen 5 5800X 3D with 8 core 16 threads and as I said before with 3DB cache, so way more cache than usual, okay? And the biggest selling point of these CPUs is actually their price. So as you can see, or at least as it shows here, the Ryzen 5 5500 non-X will be around $122 or around $130, so $130, which will put it more or less on par with um, with a new i3-12-1000, okay? So it will be more or less on par with 4 cores, 8 threads, but it will bring 6 cores and 6 threads, which is supposed to be faster in most scenarios, at least in most recent games. As for the Ryzen 5 5600, we actually have a selling point of below $200, so more or less on par with the 12400 or the 12400F, okay? So both with 6 cores and 12 threads, but I still think that the 12400F will be faster. It is already faster than the 60, than the 5600X in some titles, uh, and since the 5600 will have lower boost clocks, well, I assume that it will be faster overall, but well, if you already have an AMD motherboard, it will be a good upgrade. If you have, for example, a 3600 and so on, so on, so on, okay? And then we have the, 50, the 5700X, which will stay at below $270, okay? Which means that it will come even lower in some scenarios because we can already have, for example, the Ryzen the Ryzen 7 5800X for around $350 right now, okay? And it is the top tier CPU, the top tier Ryzen 7 CPU. So if we're going for the 5700X, if we indeed get something around $250, it will be a killer deal. But let's not forget the current pricing. So they are actually trying to put the 5700X at the same price as the 12600K and the 12600K as higher IPC. And the 12600K can be bought right now at $279. Yes, I have the prices here. $279 on Newegg, for example, uh, while the 5800X, like I told you before, is $349. Uh, so yeah, the 12600K is very fast and even if they release the 5700X indeed uh, at the same price as the 12600K, it will only be worth it for people having an AMD motherboard already and wanting to upgrade. People going to newer builds just are better building off the, the Intel one. And why? Because of the current pricing. We have the 5600X still being the king in terms of price performance. No, that's that's not how it works. The 5600X is not the king in terms of price performance. If we actually want to go price performance, uh, we go to the 12400F, okay? The 5600X is currently way overpriced even comparing to the to the 12600K, which is in most scenarios faster, even with the DDR4 RAM, while consuming 
more or less the same power in gaming and in terms of multi-threading it is way faster due to 16 threads compared to uh, the 12 threads on the, on the 5600X. And we have the 5600G currently at $200, $224, um, which is more or less, which is even more than the 5600 non-X will sell for. So it is a no-brainer for people actually wanting just a CPU to get the 5600 non-X instead of the 5600G because it once again has less cache, less PCI lanes and in terms of performance in some games the cache will make a huge difference. For example, games like CSGO, games like Valorant, League of Legends, games that usually use super high FPS numbers, the cache will make the difference. So you're 100% better getting the 5600 non-X instead of the 5600G. Now to end this video, we actually need to understand why AMD is doing this now. If they are doing this, why they are doing it right now and not three months ago, six months ago, one year ago, why now? It is a given that you must thank AMD for the current Intel generations because if it weren't, or if it wasn't for AMD, Intel would still be stagnated and wouldn't be releasing new and better CPUs. That's a given. But if this is actually happening, these new CPUs right now, you also need to thank Intel and competition for putting AMD in an actual situation where they need to have lower end chips to kind of fight the lower end Intel chips because with the 10th, 11th and the 12th generation of Intel CPUs, they all they did was basically rule over the low end uh, Ryzen chips. So the i3 and the i5 10100, 10400F, once again the 11400 and the uh, 11100F, and now once again the i3 12100F and 12400F. They are the best price performance you can get right now in all these three generations. And AMD can't compete on that. And that's one of the reasons they are now releasing the lower end chips to actually fight the lower end Intel chips. One of the reasons. Because in my point of view, the second reason, the second one, is that AMD has done, um, but not has done, but AMD has milled you, you already. already. Okay, they didn't have low-end chips, so the lower-end chips were like the Ryzen APUs, the 5300G, the 5600G, which were quite pricey if you ask me, so they weren't priced correctly. Uh, and you have, for example, uh, the Ryzen 3 3100 and the 3300X on the lower-end chips. But AMD couldn't just win on the price-performance ratio of the Intel chips in the last three generations, so why releasing these CPUs now? They could just not get it all and just release the new Ryzen 7000 series, top, mid and low tier and just blow everything out of the water and sell in all departments. But they are not doing that because they are going to 5 nanometers and they have lots of 7 nanometer dies, I assume. So now that they are going actually the, to the top tier 5 nanometers, they are actually spending all the 7 nanometers they have and making lower tier CPUs to actually fight the lower tier Intel CPUs um, at lower prices while transitioning to 5 nanometers. So it's a very good play in terms of market. It's a shitty play for the consumers because we actually didn't have a single good performing low tier CPU from AMD in like two years. Um, and now we have, but not because of the consumer, because of the market play. Okay, they have, they, they are going to 5 nanometers, so they have 7 nanometers die, 7 nanometer dies and they are actually spending those dies in lower end uh, chips. And that's because the newer CPUs will most likely be released in the end of the year, in the end of 2022. And then we actually need three or four more months uh, for AMD to release maybe the mid tier and the low tier chips. So we have a time span of like maybe close to one year. And if they release these, uh, these new um, lower tier CPUs now, and they actually spin the 7 nanometer dies, they will make lots of money on the low and mid tier gaming scenarios while actually making more money when the Ryzen 7000 series come out. But overall, if this is true, we will indeed benefit because we will have finally 
cheaper AMD builds in terms of CPUs. We don't need to get the 3600, we don't need to get the 3700X, we can simply get the 5700X and the 5600 or even the 5500 at very good prices because Zen 3 is really, really efficient in terms of gaming. And if we actually get the Zen 3 CPU performing really, really well without being an APU, a full CPU, at the low price, we actually manage to get builds at lower price as well, which is always good for budget builders. It is what it is, you can thank Intel for that, as you can thank AMD for bringing the best out of Intel. Competition is the key, guys. Thanks a lot for watching, don't forget to hit like, subscribe and share this video and leave your comment in the comment section. Let me know what you think about the new release of these CPUs, the new possible release of these CPUs, because it's a rumor, uh, and what do you think of the pricing as well? And why now also? I want to know that. See you in the next video.